Hi friends, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, I'm sorry that I took a little longer hiatus than I meant to, but we're back. Today we have Dr. Grady. Dr. Grady is with the anesthesia department uh, at Cedar Valley Medical Specialist and at Allen Hospital. He uh, went to school at West High, went to University of Iowa, and has been practicing here for the last 12 years. We've been working with the anesthesia doctors at Digestive Health Center to uh, enhance the care that you get. We're doing that uh, in many ways, but I wanted to touch on two things. One uh, strategy is that uh, for patients who require uh, sedation that requires closer monitoring, we're using a new type of anesthesia called MAC anesthesia, or MAC sedation rather, and uh, Dr. Grady is going to touch on that. And then we have been collaborating in different ways to educate our staff uh, on issues related to safety in, in ways that we can safely take care of you. And we're going to touch on that too. So thank you, Matt. Uh, um, uh, so take it away. Uh, what's uh, max sedation? Uh, what can you tell us about that? And uh, we can touch on the other aspect at the end as well. Yeah, thanks, Ravi. Uh, MAC sedation uh, stands for Monitored Anesthesia Care. Um, it's a sedation that we do often in GI clinics, we do it in hospitals. Anytime we're not doing a total general anesthetic, meaning a, a breathing tube and total unconsciousness, although sometimes MAC anesthesia can uh, produce unconsciousness for a short amount of time. Um, but it really allows for uh, us to do uh, procedures that are painful or uncomfortable uh, and to be done uh, so you don't feel anything, so you don't know what's going on during that procedure. Um, you would have an anesthesiologist taking care of you or a nurse anesthetist who would administrator, administer the drugs that we're using. Um, we monitor your vital signs, uh, ensure your airway is maintained throughout the case, and just make sure that you're safe and asleep for the procedure. Um, could you remember something in these procedures? Yes, but usually you're under a pretty deep, uh, a deep anesthetic at that point. So. And it's safer for the patients because they wake up faster and uh, uh, we're watching them uh, even more closely, right? Is that the other advantage from there, from a patient standpoint? That's exactly right, yeah. So you have a, you know, a trained anesthet anesthetist or anesthesiologist taking care of you, um, and it's a deeper sedation than what's usually given by uh, the endoscopist, um, using mainly a drug called propofol. Uh, the drug propofol is a great drug for this kind of procedure. It works fast, it wears off fast, uh, it doesn't leave that kind of a hangover effect that you would get with some of the other medications that we mm -hmm. use. It's not a narcotic. It doesn't cause nausea and vomiting. Just a great drug for this procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, the drawback to it is it can cause you to stop breathing if you get enough of it. So you really need somebody that's uh, trained in airway management to, to be able to deal with that and to be able to titrate the medication so that you don't get that loss of breathing during the procedure. And by airway management, you mean just making sure that the breathing is comfortable, making sure that you know the tongue doesn't fall back to kind of make sure that people are just comfortable uh, taking oxygen in and oxygen uh, breathing carbon dioxide out. Yeah, well, yeah, both getting oxygen in and ventilating get rid of carbon dioxide. So uh, occasionally, if you get somebody too deep, they could need to have a breathing tube, and that's really where uh, the expertise comes in, if they had to have a breathing tube. Um, fortunately, we're really good at titrating those medications. It's pretty rare that we have to put a breathing tube in for that. So, yeah. so that's... Uh, 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 MAC anesthesia folks. The other uh, thing that uh, we've been focusing on is making sure that all of us here are well trained in administering and managing airways uh, and we've been very working very closely with the uh, anesthesia providers on that. Um, do you want to speak of the uh, lectures and other things that we've been doing and on ha hands-on training? Yeah we've had a few of our providers come and do talks with uh, with your staff about you know what really happens when we need have an airway situation where we need to help maintain that airway. Uh, again most most airways don't need to be maintained during a procedure the patient maintains their own airway um, but when it needs to be done it's usually an emergency situation situation. It's really good to have those kind of uh, discussions and talks with the staff so they know what to expect when that emergency arises. Right. So we know where the equipment is, we know where the uh, uh, drugs are, we know how not to get there, and if we are somehow there, how to manage that. Right. All of, those, right. Uh, all of those things. So our goal, uh, friends, is to make this uh, environment uh, as safe, uh, as uh, possible, uh, and comfortable uh, for all of us that have other medical conditions that make regular sedation uh, sometimes a little challenging. So thank you for joining us. If you have further questions regarding uh, anesthesia care or MAC sedation, 
uh, feel free to call us or email us or reach out to us on Facebook and I'll try to kind of incorporate that into my next lecture. We'll see you again next week.